I struggle to join in Namtlanji. I don't know why my network was problematic, uh, but nevertheless, I think uh, I'm glad that uh, we are in. Okay, without wasting time, I think we've already lost five uh, minutes. Today, if I, uh, uh, if I have my dates correctly, I think this is our very last day on spiritual growth. And I just want to conclude with something that uh, the Holy Spirit has laid upon my heart. Perhaps 10 minutes will be enough. Immediately after that, we'll then move into a season of prayer as we usually do. Now, when we speak of spiritual growth, we usually think of spiritual growth in uh, selfish terms. Um, we never truly realize the power or the impact of prayer not just for others, not for us rather, but for others. And I'd like to look at spiritual growth from that perspective, that sometimes in our weaknesses, God can capacitate us to be instruments of healing for other people. And we never really think of it from that perspective. Uh, each and every single time that we think of spiritual growth, we think of it um, within linear terms. And I'm here to basically show you in the few minutes that I have that God is able to use you at your point of your weakness to be able to be a healing element to be able to be a point of capacity for someone else effectively i am saying you do not need to reach a position of strength in order for you to be relevant as far as helping someone else heal through their process of pain go through their process of trauma or to be able to recover where they had previously failed when you look at the gospel of luke from chapter 7 beginning from verse 1 all the way to 17 uh, read it once we are done here because it's quite a long passage of scripture. You will realize that there are actually two intertwined stories that are there. In the very formative part, we are met with a request for healing. Um, Jesus finds a request for healing um, from a man uh, who was uh, of authority. You want to appreciate the fact that uh, something happens here that's quite interesting, um, which is the fact that uh, the centurion, who's a man of power, um, stands in the gap effectively, stands in the gap for the servant. Okay? Um, and the Bible then you know, clearly tells us that uh, Jesus then says, look, it's fine, I'll make my way there. What is interesting to note is the fact that the centurion was a man of power, the centurion was a man of authority. The centurion um, was a man of learning and influence. Effectively, I'm saying the centurion did not need the servant. The centurion could have left the servant to die. He financially had the muscle to find or buy another slave, but he does not do that. The Bible says he stands in the gap and seeks the counsel of Jesus in order for Jesus to come and heal uh, this man. The Bible, of course, explicitly tells us uh, that before even Jesus could even get there, he's met by another envoy that says, do not even uh, bother coming. For the simple reason that, uh, you know, uh, the, since she, the, the servant is dead. And for the first time, for the first time in the book of Luke, we are then met with the power of what I call intercessory prayer. A couple of weeks ago, I spoke on this theme, I spoke on this concept, and I think it's when we started. And I just want to reiterate it so that we, we conclude with the same thing that we started on. Intercessory prayer is not when you pray for someone because you have the resources to do so. But intercessory prayer is when you stand in the gap for those who are in need of the very thing that you are in need of. In fact, let me even take it further. It is when you stand in the gap to pray for those who are in need of something that you may not even have. And so while the uh, centurion was healthy physically, spiritually, he was a man who was in need of divine revelation. And when we stand in the gap for others to be healed, when we stand in the gap for others to find permanent employment, when we stand in the gap for others um, to be able to be resourceful in society, God uses us not just as conduits, but God also uses that opportunity to heal broken parts of ourselves. And I'm effectively telling um, the people who've joined us this morning that your healing lies in interceding for others. If you are looking for healing in your own personal life, learn to take the, the, the problems of others into account and you will appreciate how God is able to use your own brokenness to be able to heal and extend a hand of help to those who are in need of it. The Bible, of course, tells us that immediately after that, people were shocked at what Jesus did. And for that, 
for, from, from that single moment, God used that incident of pain um, that was in the personal life of the servant as a moment of revelation for all of those who are in there. I want to pause here and briefly ask a question. And the question is, what has broken in your life? Um, which aspect of your, your life are you going through? Which phase, which season, um, which time span are you in in your personal life that is in need of the healing touch of Jesus Christ? There are times in life where we are unable to pray because we operate under the misconception that prayer has to do with words. There are moments in life where we wake up and we just, the weight is just too much. We just, you know, we just doubt that the presence of God is with us. And I'm here to tell you that it is in those very moments that we ought to intercede for others. What I'm saying is very, very difficult to do, particularly when you're sitting there alone and you're going through moments of turmoil, moments of doubt and isolation. But I, I stand on this promise and I'm very, very much uh, you know, convicted of this, that when we begin to pray for other people, it is at that very moment that God is able to heal us. We then conclude the story with what happens immediately after. And the conclusion, of course, the Bible tells us that Jesus enters the city of Nain and lo and behold, when he gets there, there is a funeral procession. A woman is there who was a widow. Of course, if you're a widow, you're someone who has lost, sadly, your husband. The Bible says there was a large crowd surrounding her, and none of those people could comfort her. When Jesus looked at her, uh, the text says Jesus looked at her and says, don't cry. Jesus says, don't cry. Immediately after that, the Bible then says Jesus touches the coffin, and the young man is raised back to life. Here are two distinct prayer requests. In the first portion, in the formative portion, there is a deliberate request from Jesus to heal. In the summative, uh, what's this aspect of the text, the woman does not say anything. If you read that text very carefully, nowhere does the woman come and say, Jesus, please uh, bring my son to life. The woman does not do that. She just cries. And this is the conclusion of the story, beloved. Uh, I want to give you this as we are about to pray. There are prayers that you will pray that God will not answer. And there are prayers that you will not pray that God will answer. I just don't have time to develop this concept, okay? There are genuine things that you will pray for that God will just keep quiet and not answer. And don't try and rationalize or philosophize. He is God, meaning he alone has the purview to decide what he actually says yes to because he answers according to his will and not really according to the volume of tears that we have when we cry. There are things that we will have in our life that we did not pray for, okay? Many of us are recipients of things that we did not pray for. Prayer tends to be complicated. And as we pray, as we are about to pray right now, let us learn to submit ourselves to the will of God and not necessarily to our own desires and wants and even needs. As we do that, let us prioritize others so that when we are looking for healing. God might use us as instruments of hope in the lives of those that are broken. God bless you. God keep you. And thank you very much, Paloma, for having me on this portal. Let us close our eyes as we pray together. Father God, we reflect now as we are about to enter a new month, your loving kindness, your compassion, and your goodness. We give you glory and we give you honor. And we ask, Father God, that you may keep us sane. We pray for the sake in the name of Jesus that healing be the their portion. We pray for those who are at work, that you grant them strength to excel. We pray for those who are seeking employment, that Heavenly Father, you may grant them the ability to take care of their families. We pray for young people. We pray for children. We pray for those, Heavenly Father, who are depressed. We pray for those who are suffering from anxiety. We pray for those, Heavenly Father, who are on the verge of giving up. We ask humbly that you cleanse and forgive us where we have wronged you, if it perhaps through thinking or through action, cleanse and forgive us for what we have done wrong. This is our humble prayer. In the name of our Lord and soon coming King, Jesus Christ, we pray. Amen.